How's everyone doing out there today? Mark Slayton here. Uh, as everybody knows, like if you know me, uh, if you know me and you watch this video, you know I'm a huge wrestling fan. I love wrestling. Uh, I did wrestling for a while. Uh, uh, ran a semi-successful show for at least for at least over a decade and everything. Uh, don't think I'll ever probably be able to get back into wrestling again just because of time-wise and everything. And adjust my camera here a little bit. <clears throat> but I still do enjoy wrestling. I enjoy watching it. Uh, and here lately and stuff, I've gotten back into watching it again. Basically, at the start of the year and everything, I was like, you know what, I'm going to... It's like, you know, I ain't got nothing else to really do and everything. So I'm going to get back into wrestling and everything. Uh, just... Like like I used to be and everything, and I've been enjoying myself. Been I've been watching as much as I possibly can, uh, and I decided I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, you know, I see a lot of people doing like YouTube videos and everything, talking about uh, Raw and SmackDown and everything. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do my own. I don't know if this is gonna take off. It's like most of my videos don't take off, uh, but I don't know if it'll take off or not. But either way, I'm still gonna do it. I'm still gonna put it out there on YouTube. Uh, so if you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much. Uh, hit that subscribe button uh, so you'll be notified when I got more content coming out. Uh, I'm going to be doing more content besides wrestling and stuff. If you're not a fan of wrestling, I'm going to be doing other stuff as well. But I'm going to start with this one here. I've got some more uh, I'm going to be filming and everything that I'll be getting out later. Uh, but uh, uh, either way, uh, like I said, I'm going to title this series uh, WWE... Uh, what kind of title? It? Mm. Oh no, I can't come up with a title right now. Oh well, let's just call it uh, uh, the week of w week of WWE wrestling or uh, weekly recap, whatever. It's just going. I'm gonna recap all the WWE shows that I watch. That's the only ones I'm actually able to watch right now. Uh, if and when uh, uh, AEW gets a, a TV deal, I might include them in it. But right now, WWE is the only one I'm able to really watch right now. Um, I don't really, I, I don't, I would watch Ring of Honor. I don't know when it comes on. I don't get the Pursuit channel, so I can't watch Impact Wrestling. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, not pretty much. So I'm going to do WWE for right now. Like I said, if AEW, when it's, when it gets up and going, if they do get a TV deal, I know people say, say oh, they got a TV deal, they got this. I haven't heard nothing about it yet, but if they do, I might include them in this week as well. But right now, we're going to go with WWE, and we're going to start off this week. Uh, the first show was Monday uh, Monday Night Raw, of course, uh, February February the 11th, uh, 2019. But I'm not going to start with Raw. I just got through watching uh, uh, the last thing for WWE this week. And I'm going to start with it because it was actually filmed prior to Raw starting. And it is WWE's main event. Uh, usually main event, you know, it's the, it's, they usually they film it before Raw starts and everything. Or they might film after, I'm not really sure. I think they, I think they film before it starts. Uh, I haven't been to a live event in a while, so I can't tell you for sure. But I'm going to start with main event. We're going to go from main event to Raw to SmackDown, 205 Live. Uh, NXT UK and we're going to end with NXT uh, because that's the way it really it goes in comparison because UK comes on before NXT so we're going to go through the week I'm going to pretty much go over the matches which matches I like from each show uh, uh, I'm not going to touch too much on the feuds because I figure a lot of you already know the feuds if it's something big I will give my opinion on that but I want to do this mainly as just a recap of all the matches that week. That way people will know what everybody's doing. So either way, let's get started. Uh, hold on a minute. <laughs> let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off with WWE's main event, which I just got through watching just a few minutes ago. Uh, the show kicked off. The first match of the evening was Heavy Machinery uh, versus The Ascension. Uh, this was a pretty good solid tag team match here. It's a good way to open the show. Uh, this was pretty much the opening, if I'm not mistaken, it was the opening to Raw, of course. Uh, I really like, I, lo I love the Ascension. I hate the fact that they don't really do nothing with the Ascension. Ascension. But Heavy Machinery, they're on a roll right now. Uh, 
This is actually their this is actually their second match. This is second time fighting the Ascension on main event. They got two wins over uh, over them now. Heavy Machinery did pick up the win on this night. Very good showing. Very good opening match. Uh, if you know me, you know I love tag team wrestling. Uh, uh, the second match uh, of main event was a six man tag team match. It was Tyler Breeze and the B team taking on the Ascension. I mean, sorry. Taking on Jinder Mahal in the Singer. Sorry, I read my notes wrong. Uh, yeah, it was a six-man tag match. Tyler Breeze and the B Team against Jinder Mahal and the Singh Brothers. Another good, solid tag team match. Uh, great work by all of them. It, it's a shame to see where Jinder Mahal has fallen on the card. After being a former WWE champion and everything, it's like I hate to see how far he's fallen. But he still goes out there every night and he does. He puts on a good show. This was more in lines. This match here really showed off more of the Singh Brothers, which was really nice to see. They had a really good showing. Um, Tyler Breeze picks up the win for his team after hitting the beauty shot on uh, Sunil Singh. Uh, very, a uh, very entertaining six-man tag match between these uh, six, uh, these six uh, uh, WWE superstars. Uh, uh, main event in the whole, really good to watch. It's like it's always entertaining. If you if you haven't watched main event in a while, I highly suggest go out of your way to check it out. I'm not. I think they got, I think they're still on TV somewhere. I'm not sure, but I watch I watch it mainly on uh, Hulu or the WWE Network. Uh, Hulu is where I've been watching it a lot here lately. But uh, go go out of your way, check out uh, WWE main event. It's like uh, the matches are always good. I mean, they always got really solid matches. If you like wrestling, you'll like the matches. Let's get into the big one, which was let's get into the big show which is the flagship show, Monday Night Raw. Uh, took place February the 11th, 2019. Uh, the show opened up with, well, let's get this out of the way. The show opened up with Becky Lynch. You know, she has to do the whole apology thing. Uh, then uh, it's like everybody's already seen what happened. If you haven't, uh, uh, so, you know, she apologized to Stephanie and Triple H. Vince comes out and says, no, I don't accept your apology. You're suspended for uh, 60 days. So that pretty much takes her out of the main event. He puts Charlotte in her place. So it's going to be Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey. And honestly, I really liked it. I mean, put the pitch porch foot down for a minute. It's like anybody that thinks that Becky is not going to be in that match, whether it's going to be a triple threat match or honestly, my opinion on it, I think they're going to go... They could do the triple threat match, and if they do do the triple threat match, uh, I watched uh, 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 What Culture Wrestling, and I like what they said about that. If they do do the triple threat match, they have Becky in the match. Becky, she can uh, uh, pin or submit Charlotte. That still protects Ronda Rousey. She doesn't lose, so they can still eventually do uh, Becky and Ronda and everything and have that blow-off match. It'll protect her and everything. Charlotte can take the loss. It ain't going to hurt her none. But honestly, I think, because they still got uh, Fastlane coming up before we get to WrestleMania, I think there's going to be a match between Charlotte and Becky at Fastlane, and the winner of that will go on the face Ronda Rousey. I don't think it's going to be a triple threat. If it's a triple threat, it's going to be awesome to see. But if it's not a triple threat, that's going to be awesome to see because that's what everybody wants. Either way, be happy about it. It's a great storyline. Everything's falling into place. It makes Becky look like the underdog, uh, uh, you know, that's fighting to fighting for everything she's got and everything. Ronda, you know, she's the champion and everything. Everybody's trying to get her title. Charlotte is that heel. She Nobody works a better heel than her, other than probably her father, Ric Flair, is like, Everything is falling into place perfectly for this uh, match, whether it be a singles match or a triple threat match or whatever they do. Everything's falling into place good for it. And me, frankly, I cannot wait to see what happens. But after that, we go into our first match tonight on Raw. It was, uh, I'm not going to mention the name because I, I hate their tag team name. It was Bailey and Sasha Banks taking on Nia Jax and Tamina and Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan of the Riot Squad. Uh, the whole premise of this match is the loser would start uh, the first in the Elimination Chamber and everything. Uh, 
decent little match here between uh, between all these women and everything. Uh, once again, Sasha Banks gets taken out, so Bailey has to go at it on her own, of course. Uh, uh, so, like, I'm curious to see where they're going to go with that. Uh, and now, uh, it's like, well, I'm going to do a predictions video later on, but I will say this. I don't think Sasha and Bailey's going to win the tag team titles. I know that's the obvious choice. But I don't think it's going to be them winning the tag team titles. I think they're got they're planting something for the uh, for these two and everything, and I don't think it's going to be tag team titles. But the winner of this match was Nia Jackson Tamina. Uh, they picked up the uh, they picked up the win by pinning Bailey. So Bailey and Sasha will start first in the elimination chamber match. Um, what's say? Once again, solid match between these two. Uh, good opener to Raw uh, to the official Raw opening. It's like nothing to complain about. Uh, nothing to complain about uh, too much about that one. Uh, then we go into, uh, and I've seen everybody, other people talk about, it, and I have to agree with them. It's like the next, the next segment on Raw was just, it was just a slog to get through. Uh, it was Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre. That match ends in the DQ, uh, thanks to Bobby Lashley. Finn Balor did pick up the win. They went from that into a six-man tag. It was a big smaz. They made a six-man tag. It was uh, Finn Balor, Kurt Angle. Uh, woo, almost pulled my cord out there. Uh, Braun Strowman against Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, and Bobby Lashley. And honestly, I did not care about this match at all. It's like I was zoning out watching this match. And it's nothing against Balor and Angle and McIntyre. And even Lashley, I like I like all of them, but I, I am so over Baron Corbin at this moment. I just don't care. I'm over Braun Strowman, honestly. It's like it's like I do not care anymore about Braun Strowman. I don't care what he's doing. They've had their chances with him, and I don't know what it is about him, but I'm just over him right now. Uh, but uh, uh, Balor, Angle, and Strowman do pick up the win for their team. It was a slog to watch this match. It really slowed the show down a whole lot. And I didn't really care. Uh, up next was Nikki Cross taking on Ruby Wright. I've seen a lot of people say it's like they don't like the fact that uh, Ruby Wright won this match and Nikki Cross lost. Well, for one, Ruby had the win because they put her. Uh, she's going to be taking on Ronda Rousey at Elimination Chamber for the women's title, so she uh, she had to win. I hate that Nikki had to lose, but honestly, this was a really good match. My only gripe about this match was I didn't like the fact that they cut away in the middle of it to do a little promo segment with Becky and Rhonda. I don't like the fact that they took away from them, from Nikki and Ruby and stuff, that they took time away from their match to show that. I understand why they had to, but honestly, I wish they would have just waited till the match was over or maybe do it before the match started or something. Uh, but all in all, I did like the match. I like both these uh, both these women and everything, Nikki Cross and Ruby Riot. Very solid match between these two. Uh, no complaints about it. Uh, then next, uh, uh, we had uh, we had the promo with Seth Rollins and Paul Heyman building hype for their match. In general, it's like it's going to be a phenomenal match between Rollins and uh, Lesnar. I can't wait to see it. I, it's like everybody knows that they're they're probably going to pull the trigger on Rollins and have him be the one to slay the beast, and then Brock's probably just going to. Go off into the sunset, counting his money as he goes. Uh, uh, then the next match comes out. Dean Ambrose, Ambrose comes out. Everybody's saying that he went off script. I don't know any true rumors to that. I'm not going to go into all that on this on my video. Uh, but he just says to Seth Rollins, slay the beast. Ghost sets down, waits on his opponent to come out, who is EC3. And uh, this is a rematch from last week. Dean Ambrose versus EC EC3. Uh, who won last week by defeating Dean Ambrose. And this week, another solid match between these two. Not really too many. Uh, no, nothing I could see anyway as far as like flubs in the match. Uh, very solid match. Dean Ambrose does pick up the win. Everybody's going to say 50-50 booking, but you know they're, they're probably building something here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we get another match between these two and may, uh, uh, some, some sort of feud may, might come out of this. Maybe. I say, who knows? Uh, but either way, it was a solid match. No complaints about it. Really liked it. Then your main event was for the tag team titles, the Revival against Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. 
if you're a fan of tag team wrestling, if you love tag team wrestling, this match right here was, it was just great. They gave them plenty of time. They, uh, all four men went out there and they, uh, they they stole the, they stole the show. This was by far the best match on Raw. Uh, the Revival do finally pick up the win and win the Raw Tag Team Titles. It was great to see that. Should have happened a long time ago, but all in all, this was by far the best match on Monday Night Raw. Uh, and I it's like no complaints. Go check this match out. Uh, watch it on YouTube or uh, however you can watch it, DVR or whatever. But if you love tag team wrestling, go check this match out. You won't be disappointed. Very good match. Then we're going to go in, uh, go into Tuesday night, which was SmackDown Live. Uh, started out once again with the Charlotte Becky thing. I think everybody knows how that went. Charlotte cut a great heel promo uh, on SmackDown Live uh, uh, to start the show. Then we had another, uh, re uh, well, not really a rehash, but we had a mirror match from Raw of the three SmackDown teams that are going to be in the Elimination Chamber like we had on Raw. It was Naomi and Carmelo taking on Sonya Deville and Manny Rose and Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, the Iconics. And uh, uh, Billy Kay and uh, Peyton Royce, it was, it, was, it was great because they didn't get in the match none. Uh, other than a few, few seconds at the beginning and stuff, they immediately tagged out and stood on there and let Sonya... Mandy, Naomi, and Carmella uh, battle it out and everything. Uh, Naomi uh, uh, gets the pin for her team by pinning uh, Mandy Rose, so I guess that's the end of that match, uh, that whole feud and everything. Uh, nothing to complain about this match. Uh, I like the work of Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, who I will go ahead and say it right now. I'm going to do a, uh, a predictions video for Elimination Chamber later on, but I will say this. If it was me and I was the one booking uh, the Elimination Chamber this Sunday, I would put the Iconics over as the first ever women's tag team titles. I think, or tag team champions, I think those two, Peyton and Billy, I think they would be perfect to carry the titles. If Maybe not for a long time, but at least up to WrestleMania. If you have somebody beat them at WrestleMania, that's fine. Uh, if they carry past WrestleMania, that's awesome too. But I think they would be the perfect choice just just because they they work great as heels. And honestly, I like heel tag I like heel champions and everything. And I think they would do such a great job. But other than that, uh very good match. Uh probably the if I had to pick a uh, nitpick and say a disappointing thing about it, probably the fact that the whole Mandy Rose Naomi thing if this was the big blow off for that whole feud, Naomi just finally getting the win over Mandy and pretty much just uh, this match and everything, I hate the fact that we wasted so much time on it. I really do. Uh, that would probably be my biggest downer. Then we had the gauntlet match, uh, all the men for the uh, Elimination Chamber match that's going to be challenging uh, Fett and Daniel Bryan, including Daniel Bryan. He was in this match. Uh, the winner of this gauntlet would enter last. And I'll just go out and say it right now. Kofi Kingston is like, he just proved that he is by far, he still got it. I mean, you don't get to see too much of Kofi anymore, you know, since he's been doing the New Day thing. He don't get too many opportunities to shine in matches. But on this night, like I said, he, he was in the ring, I think they said for uh, over an hour and everything. And, I mean, he he was just he was just he was he was perfect uh, all night and everything. I mean, everything he did was just great. Uh, every match that he was in, when he he took on Daniel Bryan, he got the pin. He pinned the WWE champion. So I'm curious to see if something happens with that. Uh, he he pinned Jeff Hardy. He pinned Samoa Joe. Him and AJ had a great match. AJ did get the win over him uh, 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 with the submission and everything, but. Is like uh, it's like they still had a great match. Uh, then Randy Orton, of course, comes in. It's like I figured it was going to be him doing it to Kofi, but he did it to AJ instead. Randy Orton comes in out RKO out of nowhere. He wins the gauntlet. He's going near the last. But the big story coming out of the SmackDown was Kofi Kingston and the fact that it's like uh, it's like honestly at the Elimination Chamber, it's like I would put the WWE title. I would probably put the WWE title on Kofi Kingston. It don't even have to be for a long time. 
It's like if they could have him keep the belt just a fast lane. It's like, but I I would I really it's like for the performance he put in at SmackDown and stuff. I would have him I would have him win the Elimination Chamber and everything. And then I would I would have I would have Daniel Bryan get it back. I would have Daniel Bryan win the title back at Fastlane and go into WrestleMania. But I, I would I would give Kofi that honor of being champion and everything, even if it was for a short time. I think he's earned it, especially with that performance he had. It was just it's just awesome. Uh, but all in all, SmackDown was really good. Uh, the Gauntlet match, really good. It's like uh, if I uh, I don't want to put the whole match on there. I would probably say. Uh, probably the match of the night was probably the first match in the gauntlet. Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston just they got so much time and it, it was it was just it, everything they did looked good and everything. But SmackDown thumbs up, very good. Uh, then we're gonna go into uh, Two Hundred Five Live, which immediately follows SmackDown on the WWE Network. Uh, it started out with Lince Dorado taking on Jack Gallagher. I'm not. I, I'll, I'll go. I'll go out on a limb and say it right now. I'm not a fan of Lucha House Party. I. I don't know. They're they're great athletes. They're great workers. I just don't care for the gimmick. Uh, Jack Gallagher. I've liked him ever since the Cruiserweight Classic and everything. I. I. I think they they've dropped the ball not utilizing him the way that they ought to be utilizing him. Uh, but uh, this was a really good match be, uh, uh, between these two. Jack Gallagher does pick up the win. Uh, so I, as a matter of fact, I think it's the first win he's had in a while because I ain't seen him actually have a match in a while. Uh, but uh, uh, he does pick up the win on 205 Live against Lince Dorado. Uh, very good match. Uh, then we had the main event for 205 Live was a no disqualification match. No Amdar against Tony Nice. Uh, these two is like if you haven't been if you've been watching 205 Live, they've had, they've had quite the rivalry and everything. And this was the culmination of that rivalry, this no disqualification match. And these two went out there, and they killed it. They literally, they, it was a very, very good match. Uh, it had it had everything you wanted. It had it had the high flying spots. It had it had the uh, hardcore uh, for the ones that like hardcore. It's like it had the brutal spots and everything. Noam Dar and Tony Nese, they they went out there and they killed it. Um, Tony Nice does pick up the win, so I'm not sure if this is the end of the rivalry. It could be, but they might have another match. Uh, uh, but if this was the end of the of the rivalry, if this was the blow off, excellent job by these two men. Uh, then we're going to go into Wednesday, NXT UK. I just got into watching NXT UK. I missed a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, when it first started. I missed the first episode and so on. I started watching this past year and stuff. I was like, you know, I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna watch uh, the Blackpool event so I can get caught up on everything, and I'll continue watching from there. And I haven't been disappointed not one tiny bit with this brand. They are knocking it out of the park with these matches. Um, the first match uh, on uh, uh, NXT UK this night was Noam Dar against Jordan Devlin. Uh, Jordan Devlin is definitely a star and everything. Look for him soon. Honestly, I think he'll get called up either to Raw. Honestly, I'd probably put him on SmackDown. I might put him on 205 Live and just that way he can wrestle. So he is definitely a star in the making. Uh, this was a very good opening match. Uh, Noam Dar does pick up the win. Uh Kind of bouncing back for, from 205 Live. Uh, before the match, uh, they had a little promo segment with uh, Rhea Ripley and Tony Storm setting up their match for next week on NXT UK. Uh, Tony Storm will do, be defending her women's title against Rhea Ripley. I can't wait to see that one. That's, that should be a really good match. Um, uh, the second match out of the gate was Jenny against Mia Yim. Uh, I'm very happy Mia Yim is in the WWE right now. I can't wait to see what she does do in the WWE. This was a fantastic women's match right here. Probably, I would probably say probably the uh, probably the best women's match of the week. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely say that the best women's match of the week and everything. Jenny against Mia Yim. Uh, very good, uh, very good action here between these two ladies. Uh, Jenny does pick up the win. 
And then the main event was a non-title match. It was Wolfgang against the NXT UK champion Pete Dunne, who's been champion now for, I think, over 600 days. Uh, I'm not sure the exact number. I know he's been champion for a long time, and he deserves it. I mean, Pete Dunne is he is incredible and everything. It's like, uh, I can't wait to see what, once he drops the title, I look for him to probably be on Raw or SmackDown, and I can't wait to see what they do with him. Uh, but this was another good match. Uh, so far, like, I, there's nothing bad to really be said. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not going into this, you know, trying to say, say, oh, that match was bad. If a match is bad, I'm going to tell you it's bad. But I sat and watched it, and I was entertained. And I, if I'm entertained and and I like it and stuff, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what I like. And this, this was a close contender for match of the week and everything. Uh, Pete Dunne and Wolfgang. A uh, very good match. Uh, it wasn't as good as Pete Dunne and uh, uh, Joe Coffey from uh, Blackpool, but it, uh, but I put it. I probably put it right up there with that match. Um, Pete Dunne does pick up the win. It's, it's gonna be interesting to see where he goes from here. I think I think we all know where he's probably going from here. It's probably gonna be Pete Dunne versus Walter at some point, which. I can't wait to see that. By the way, they did say Walter's next opponent. I can't wait to see this match. Walter versus Cassius Ono and everything. That's going to be something. That's going to be hard hitting. And Cassius Ono is going to die. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, uh, Walter's my new favorite guy in WWE right now. First time seeing him in a while. I went, actually, when he debuted, I went and found some of his stuff on YouTube and everything uh, prior to signing with the WWE, and yeah, Walter's awesome. <laughs> uh, then we're going to go into uh, the regular NXT show uh, down uh, down in Orlando. Uh, NXT started off, it was a match, Dominic Dijakovic versus Shane Thorne. And I have to say this, I wasn't too excited about Dominic Dijakovic the first time I saw him, but the more and more I'm seeing of him, he's got something. I don't know what it is, and I don't know if he'll ever uh, ever uh, reach that top level, but if he does, he is going to be phenomenal. And no pun intended towards AJ Styles. It's like, he's got something there. He's just got to get it out. He's got to get that personality out. He does pick up the win uh, over Shane Thorne. Uh, and a very good opener for NXT. Uh, the second match was a tag team match. It was uh, Humberto Carrillo and Stacey Ir Irvine Jr. taking on the Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford. And I'll go out. I'll go ahead and say it right now. I don't care for the Street Profits. I mean, they're, they're uh, nothing against them as far as talent-wise. They're very, very talented. I just don't care. I, I don't care for the gimmick. I, is like, I, I, there's just something about them I don't like. I don't know what it is. Uh, but the same could be said for that uh, for uh, Humberto Carrillo. Uh, since he debuted uh, back on Two Hundred Five Live the first time I saw him, yeah, he he's he's an awesome wrestler and everything. Can do some amazing things, but. I don't see him lasting. I just, he has no personality at all, and I just, I don't see it. Uh, it's like, uh, he's an amazing wrestler, don't get me wrong. But I just, I don't know. Uh, uh, on a side note, Stacey, uh, Stacey Irvine Jr. in this match, I think it was Montez Ford. If you haven't seen this match, he gives him this backdrop, and it is the scariest thing I've ever seen. He drops this kid right on his head and everything, and I swear to God, I thought he was knocked out. And I think the referee did too and everything. Uh, but it was just freaking scary and everything. I have a feeling that Montez Ford probably got... He probably got an earful from uh, Triple H or somebody in that back when he got back there about that. Uh, the Street Poppies do pick up the win. It was, a, it was an okay little match. Uh, nothing really to, uh, uh, nothing really to excite you. Once again, like I said, I don't care about the Street Profits. I just, they're good talent, but I just... Just not my cup of tea. Uh... A women's action was next. It was Tanora Conti against Aaliyah. 
Tenor uh, Tenor Conte, uh, the Brazilian uh, Jiu Jitsu, uh, first Brazilian to actually sign with the WWE, which was which is really cool. She was impressive in the uh, May Young Classic, um, and Aaliyah and everything. I've followed her ever since. I think the uh, first time I saw her was on the uh, Breaking Ground show on the WWE Network and everything, and she's she's came a long way and everything. She's got a new gimmick now. I'm interested to see where it's going to go from here. Uh, she does pick up the win on this night. It was a so-so match. You know, wouldn't nothing, nothing, nothing really be impressed with. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where they go uh, with both uh, Tanora and Aaliyah and everything, especially with this new gimmick she's got. Kind of reminds me uh, of Carmella a little bit, but a mixture of Carmella and Jenny, the whole fashionista type thing. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go with that. Uh, match of the night was next for NXT anyway, uh, as Ricochet took on Adam Cole. And what can I say? It's Ricochet and Adam Cole. I mean, if you don't know who these two gentlemen are, uh, uh, look them up on YouTube and check out some of their stuff. Uh, Adam Cole, I'm a huge fan of. I cannot wait to. I cannot wait for him to uh, debut on the main roster. It's like I hope they. It's like they definitely got a star right there, and they're making Ricochet. It's like he's definitely gonna be a star too. I don't think he's gonna have the staying power of an Adam Cole, uh, because honestly, with the way he wrestles and stuff, it's like, it's like he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to probably tone it back a little bit because injury's gonna catch up fast on him and everything. But don't get me wrong. He is very impressive. Like I said, it's like watching a video game when you watch Ricochet in the ring. The way he moves and the stuff he does. I mean, it's very impressive. Adam Cole, he's just, he, he he's not he's not technically the best wrestler in the world, but he's the best showman. And he can get it done in big matches and everything. And that's exactly what he, like I said, you know, everybody compares him to this. And it's true. He reminds me of Shawn Michaels and everything. If, if, if. If he if if he stays on the path he's going and everything he could be this generation Shawn Michaels he really could, uh, but uh, Ricochet he does pick up the win, uh, for uh, 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 in the main event of NXT on this night, and that was it that was the week of WWE from uh, February the 11th till February the 13th and everything. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Oh, I forgot I was going to tell you what i thought anyway my opinion match of the week for this week i'm going to give it to 205 live the no disqualification match noam dar versus tony niece i thought that was definitely the match of the week go out and check that match out uh, i hope you enjoyed this video i know it's going to be pretty long i'm probably going to start cutting these down i'm going to see how this one does first so uh, it's like as we go along i'm probably going to make these a little bit shorter I might only talk about one or two matches. I don't know. I might, I might continue to talk about them all. But like I said, this is just something I wanted to do. I love wrestling. Uh, I love all wrestling and stuff. I would watch Ring of Honor if I knew when it came on. I would watch Impact Wrestling if I had the Pursuit channel. I don't have that Pursuit channel. Uh, I keep up with it on YouTube, but you know they don't show the whole matches on YouTube, so it's hard to really get into it. I like sitting down watching the whole match from start to finish. I don't like any interruptions. Um, maybe AEW when they get started, maybe they will get a TV deal. I hope they do. It's like, uh, you know, it's like, I'm still going to be, I'm still going to watch WWE even with AEW. It's like, I, I've always watched WWE. I watched WCW, you know, it's like back in the day, but you know, I was always a WWE, WWF fan and everything. Nothing's going to stop me from watching WWE. Uh, but you know, if AEW gets something going, I'll watch it too, even though, like I said, I don't know a lot of the wrestlers that are going to be on there, but if they get a TV deal, I'll get to know the wrestlers and everything, but that's the thing. they got to have a TV deal. But either way, thank you for watching. This was week uh, uh, week one of uh, WWE Wrestling and everything, well, at least week one of this series and everything. i got to come up with a title. I don't know. I'll come up with something. But thank you for watching. I am Mark Slayton, and I'll see you next time.